So let's record. Um, we're recording. Let's see if Joe Kelly Meister is on here. He might be, maybe not. But guys, any questions that you have, this is now the time that I want you to ask them. So post them in the webinars channel um, and let's get some questions answered. If you guys have, and, and again, if you guys have any questions about upgrading, about signing up, um, basically anything as it relates to getting in our wonderful club, you can literally just hit my direct line or DM me right here. I don't even, I don't know if Joe's actually here today. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Last week, dude, he was, he was like taking a crap or something. I think he was in line for like a burger or something. And he was waiting until like 1210 my time. So let's see if he's here. <laughs> he's probably just waiting, thinking I'm still talking about the slack. <laughs> oh shit. It has he damn. I'll tell you what, man, dude, what, what we could change it up today, man. Does someone want to come on? Amen. Alex, does anybody want to come on? I could bring dude, like Tay. <laughs> Ah, oh, shoot. I didn't realize Joe was out this week. Hey, if you guys want me to riff, I can riff, but I can bring someone on as well. Whatever you guys want to do, whatever you guys want to talk about. <laughs> Tay's like, nah, you too, you're too vulgar for me. <laughs> Who's got some Harry? Where's Harry? Someone, someone tell Harry Haas to get in here. I'll bring him on. Why not? I don't think he's trading right now. <laughs> he's in witness protection. <laughs> Call that little Canadian out. <laughs> but guys, if you do have any questions, just bring them right here. Uh, but if I don't see any questions here soon, I'm just going to start riffing, man. I'm just going to start talking about my stuff. so badly want to talk about the presidential election, but I'm not going to, I'm going to keep that for a different conversation. I would only bring that up if Joe was here, man. I'm telling you, right. Cause we have so much fun talking about like the state of the market, but wow, that's some nasty sell off right there. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely no politics. Not today. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, until, until maybe Harry comes on or something, let's, let's talk about some stuff. So let's go back to actually the, let's go back to, hold on one second. Let me expand this as much as I can. Um, one sec, guys. Let's expand this and let's talk about some of the things that maybe I do every day or what I'm looking for, or maybe you guys can look for on a general basis when it comes to price action. So let me just, I'll just show you some of my process, literally just some of what I do every single morning. So again, guys, the, you know, one of the number one things that you can do every single morning is reach out to Alex's watch list channel and then see what's running, right? Like Bow's posting scans in the main room. Alex is literally talking about the exact levels he wants on everything. But when it comes to exactly what we are thinking, uh, or at least what I'm thinking every single day, let's talk about some things. So check this out. Uh, let me, I got to keep moving this little icon so it doesn't get in the way of the charts. One sec. Uh, poor little Canadian Harry. So I, I, I TRM guys, the one thing that we talk about every single week. So if we have a ton of stocks moving, oh, I definitely will, Bram. Give me a sec. The thing that I want to convey to you guys is the thing that I've learned over seven years that has really, really, really in a nutshell helped me, man. And I tell a lot of members this, if we get on like a trader call or something is twofold, twofold. If you incorporate these into your trading, you are going to see unbelievably massive results or, you know, something for the better. Are you guys fighting trend and are you guys using hard stops? Hard stops are going to be one of the number one things you need in trading because when a black swan comes and you know you just go, okay, I'm going to use a mental stop. Dude, so many times it blows right through the level that you want to quit or stop out on that trade. It keeps going and then you're frozen and then it just keeps compounding and compounding. I mean, I'm telling you right now, if you guys haven't seen some of these crazy, crazy moves and what they can do where a stock goes from two to 40 in a day, this is, look, this is why we have hard stops. Yes, of course you can cut yourself off mentally. We can always do that. But dude, at the end of the day, <laughs> Harry's banning himself from after hours for a week. Got it. 
when it comes to hard stops, guys, the reason why we have them on is for the anomalies, is for the one that blows through your mental stop and then puts you in a state of emergency, puts you, makes you shit your trading diaper. Number two, are you guys, so, so are you guys using hard stops? Number two is, are you fighting trend every single day, every single day, every single day? Let's see. What were the runners? Um, I know um, some of the weak ones were C-Tech, c, -Tech, c -Tech, and Adel. So let's take a look, right? Um, c -Tech today. What do you notice in this stock? Dude, it's up a lot but it's beaten down. This is not what's called a hot chick. So we've got, you know, kind of verbiage and lingo at MIC that is very, very much tailored to which side of the trend is intact for each stock. This is what's called a broken down stock. There's a lot of overhead. I'm going to draw some lines for you. Check this out. Uh, oh, nice. Let's just take a quick look at what Bow just traded. Ambo. Yep. Right back to VWAP. State of resistance. Nice job, Bow and a red to green line as well. But let's take a look back at CT guys. So check this out. Let's, let's just draw some lines for the pre-market, right? The top of pre-market, and you could do this every single day to the point of basically the open, right? Look at how many people are underwater by the time this opened. This is called overhead. These are longs underwater on their position. Anybody who brought from, bought from basically 240 to 382, correct? Dude, that's almost half the entire move is people are underwater. Literally, look at that. I mean, you could just eyeball it for God's sakes. If you did Fibonacci retracements from zero to 100, that, that's like 50% basically. So what happens when something like this happens? We are wanting to short a resistance point and the more coupling factors you have is the more that it is, it is um, you know, stronger, right? Like the, the more, it's just way stronger. So on outer lines, I'm always putting near the, near the tops, right? Like the, uh, like the points of resistance that I think it is probably, you know, a good chance of failing off. And I like these, you know, I like these in the morning. It didn't quite reach my line, so I didn't hit it. But the whole point is, is this actually, Alex was calling it, he wanted 250, which is about right here, because not only was it a whole and half dollar number, it actually um, correlated with a, with a VWAP push and fail. So this was kind of like a double resistance and it lines up even right here. So you guys can really take that into consideration, but any pops on this, there's all so many long traders underwater that this is actually probably going to be followed with some kind of resistance and sell off into these, what's what's called quote unquote relief pops for the guys that are bag holding their position. Correct. The reason why I wanted to introduce that versus this one is ITRM look at the way it was trading pre-market. There's not a lot of people underwater. Now, I'm not talking about the daily chart. I'm talking specifically intraday and pre-market. If this is up from, let's say, 66 cents up here, this does not look like what CTIC looks like or CTEC. This was another one. You know, by the time, um, by the time this opened, guys, look at this. I, was, I wanted a VWAP push. Why did I want a VWAP push? Because this was trading so far under that any relief pop into this resistance line, God, I, I would have scaled. Um, now I'm a little bit more conservative and I'm, I wait for outer lines more than the next guy, but dude, this was my bread and butter. If this would have made it up to here, this, this, I would have been like foaming at the mouth. Like this is what I'm looking for. This just really kind of tapered off and then didn't do anything until zombie hour. Right. And then, if you do draw a line, which you should every single day on your charts at 1030 Eastern uh, after the first hour, this is when you need to kind of wrap up your shorts. This is when we kind of lose the edges short bias traders. This is the first hour. This is where the edge is. This is where you are going to see a lot better results as a short bias trader. And then things tend to zombie, man. Volume dries up. It comes back in spurts. Pumpers may bring it back in. And then when it comes to volume, simply take a look. Let's take a look. The reason why this came back so strong is the volume was not only meeting the levels of the morning, it was expanding upon it. And this was the highest, at least intraday, the stock had ever been. All you had to do was pay attention to the volume. You see that? It's dead. There's no demand here. There's, nobody's buying this down here until you do start getting little perks and then you get some actual, some fluidity. You get some momentum. And then again, I'm just going to lay this out for you guys. I'm just going to lay it down it, at 11 to 12. Like I showed earlier, you have another edge in shorting. Like I said earlier, 
This is what Bao does every single day, man. He's showing up in the morning. He's using the majority of size. And yeah, so let's take a look at what Bao is actually saying right now. Notice after 3 p.m. NNDM. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh yeah, man. See, look at this. So two things, two things, guys, seriously, two things to, to, to pay attention to. Not only is the trend still pretty much intact on a multi-day kind of trend upward. And I like to just, I eyeball it, man. Like I don't even have to connect the points. This thing is just up from yesterday, went up in after hours. Yeah, it did, but it reclaimed pre-market. So you know, there's some strength in there. And then what did we say? What did we say? If you draw a line, 3 p.m., Eastern Standard Time is when shorts lose their edge. That's when they lose their edge. This is not a time you want to be short, especially on a strong stock, on something that has been squeezing, on something that has been holding, on something that is a multi-day runner. This is dangerous to short. So when you get a VWAP reclaim around this time period, dude, you better not be adding to your position and adding blindly without a stop and like, oh, okay, I'll do a mental stop. No, dude, that's very dangerous because something like this, if this closes super strong, can gap up again. Look what it did. Look, look I'll, I'll just give you an example. So when something does what NNDM did, like yesterday, right? Like literally, let's take a look at this. This was yesterday's price action. When this is strong and closing high, it's closing strong into the close. You have two very, very common options. You have the option of one, a nice pre, uh, after hours run up. But because, dude, the strength is spilling over. People are like, dude, I'm telling you, we're going to get a gap up on this or whatever. But if it doesn't do a massive run after hours, sometimes it'll just close right where it is. And then you'll get a gap up right here tomorrow where it starts there. You see what I'm saying? People thought they were in the clear right here. No, nah, dude. And then this thing was like, uh-uh. Because not a lot of people were underwater from the day before, even right here. Again, price action is king. No matter if you're a fundamental trader or you're a price action trader, price action will always tell you if you're wrong or right. Dude, I know a lot of fundamental traders that freaking blew their entire um, life savings, man, thinking that, oh my God, this is the worst, it's the worst company in the world. That doesn't matter, dude. That doesn't matter. Look, I'm not saying fundamentals doesn't matter. Don't get me wrong. I, that, that totally matters. That offers an edge. What I'm saying is, is you can't play your bias and you can't say, look, just because I know an NDM should be down, I'm going to short and I should be right. You need to remain, the market can remain way crazier than you can remain solvent, right? Is that, that's the old saying. I know Bao knows it exactly, but the market, uh, irrational, right? Like the market can be irrational way longer than your account can be solvent. Price action and volume always will trump everything in my opinion. And I'll bet you, I'll bet you, even if you ask our fundamental trader, markets can remain irrational a lot longer than I can remain solvent. Yep, John Maynard uh, Canis. So check this out, guys. This is our fundamental trader right here. I showed you guys earlier. Chicago trader, his real name's Matt. I know he will tell you. I know because I picked his brain before. As much as he can tear apart an SEC filing, like I can tear apart a Tinder profile, he will tell you that, dude, at the end of the day, if price action is telling you you're fucked, guess what? You're fucked. You need to have hard stops and you need to know when to do it. Now, this doesn't mean that something can't fail in at 3 p.m. This doesn't mean that at all. This could close back down to 240 today. I'm, I, I'm not trying to guess it. I'm not trying to anticipate it. I'm just saying that the, your edge as a short is not here. That's the whole point. You just want to kind of lock up your shorts by this time. Does that make sense? You have an hour window in, in the middle of the day as a short bias trader if you're not trading the immediate morning. The famous last words were, this time it'll be different. And the thing about trading is it's a probability game. The reason why I had trouble as a short in my first um, year and a half is because here's what would happen, guys. Here's what would happen. And I'll give it to you in a nutshell. I would be right. And, you know, Bao did this in his early days too. He would tell me. I would be right 30 days in a row. It didn't fucking matter. That 31st day, I'm stuck short from freaking 202 on NNDM on that 31st day. And I'm adding here. And then it goes to four and I'm stopping out and I'm losing the month of gains. I, I can't tell you how many times I did. Dude, I did that for a year straight. So I was like, dude, I'm king short. I'm, I'm baller. I'm cocky. I don't need a hard stop. Dude, I didn't use a hard stop until a year and a half ago. I've been trading for seven years. I would run this shit overnight. And guess what? A month of gains gone in one day because I was a dumbass. Or as Bao would say, my favorite saying, a dumb fuck. You got to incorporate hard stops. Number one, well, here, I'm going to, dude, I'm going to write out. Like, I want you guys to screenshot this. I swear to God, dude. Number one, hard stops. 
Number two, don't fight trend. Number three um, is basically, well, I would say time-based trading. Master, master time-based intervals for trading. Dude, if you can if you can master these four things or these three what are they, three things, dude, you you're gonna set yourself up for so much success, man. So much freaking success, guys. I screenshot it if you have to. I swear to God, hard stops. You cannot leave it up to a mental stop because when an when an NNDM comes or a UONE or something crazy, it only takes one. I knew traders who made 30, 40, hundred thousand dollars a day then a stock comes around and they lose a million bro you want to live like that look at what alex has done out the reason why everybody wants to be alex the reason why alex is the most disciplined trader in the world the reason why it's not about making 20 million dollars in a year is because alex is literally walking process i'll tell you what he does if you're not familiar he is up a million dollars on the year on process that we teach. He's not withholding information. He's not withholding everything. He shows you watch list. He shows you commentary. He shows you the lines. He shows you what he sized and he shows you a PL. He will trade with a $35,000 account. Hear me here. You got to hear me on this because this is how important process is. Alex will trade with a $35,000 account. Guess what? When he makes $15,000, when it goes to 50, he wires the fuck out. Dude, look at this. This, this, is, from our, this is from our boys at Cobra. This is, uh, this is my main man. Um, um, uh, th these, are, these are the guys at Cobra, dude. This is literally Chad and all these guys. And Chris, look at this. As per your request, we have generated your profit loss for the, for the time period from January 1st, 2020 through September 9th, 2020, based on cleared trades through your account held by our clearing firm which is Wedbush. We have determined your profit loss, profit and loss for this account during this time period is a total of 453,000 net after all fees. Guess what? That's one account. Here's his E-Trade. Here's his E-Trade, 499. That's Cobra and that's E-Trade. And I think, is this the 30 count? <laughs> I can't even keep up with all this fucking shit. Dude. That's a million dollars if you add it all together, guys. That's a million dollars. My point is, and I haven't even gotten to it yet, my point is this, Alex trades an hour a day and he cuts himself off an hour. He, dude, I, I'm telling you literally out of this million dollar year, I know for a fact, maybe three days, Alex traded a little bit in a lull, a little bit, only because maybe Bao wasn't around to slap him around. Bao was probably out sick. Bao was probably out partying. Something happened where Bao wasn't there that day to say, hey, dude, cut it off. And then Alex was like, oh shit, I'm over trading. My point is is Alex's walking process and it's teachable, it's scalable, it's, it's repeatable. So if you're part of a service or you're part of um, any kind of room where you cannot actually do what your mentor is doing, how, why the fuck are you in that room, dude? Why, why are you in that room? Swinging $500,000 P&Ls down 300, up 100. Guys, can you, can, look, I'm just saying, can, can, you, can you repeat that? All I'm saying in this is everything that we teach is repeatable. In fact, you can literally be Alex, but you got to do, you, you got to put in it. I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm saying trading is not an easy career, but it's simple. And Alex has simplified exactly how he did it. He posts it. He talks about it. We, we talk about it every single day. Uh, GSE224, I didn't know Alex watched all MIC content before it gets posted. LOL, he never stops. You think Alex needs to be in this webinar right now? No, dude, he's in Miami. He is technically on a vac vacation slash work life right now, but it's a, it's, a, it's a different norm for what he's used to in New Jersey. You think he needs to be in this webinar right now? No, but dude, he will outwork everyone. Alex will outwork. <laughs> yeah, I should be on a beach with an umbrella in my drink. Literally, Alex. Dude, Alex, the reason why he makes a mil a year, making the most amount of money with the least amount of stress. Why? Because he has a process because he sticks to his discipline. Alex is such a master of things. I've never seen anything like it, dude. Now he's, now he's taking it to, to health. Now he's taking it to his body. He's working out. Dude, Alex is going to look like Terry Crews in like two months. I know it because this fucker's so goddamn disciplined, dude.
that's the point a million dollars in a year or look like terry cruz in a year like he's extreme dude i'm telling you he's good but he, it's crazy the point is guys is if you cannot repeat what your what the people in charge of your room i'm not even gonna say mentor i'm not even gonna say guru i'm not even gonna say guru just the people in charge of whatever room you're in moderators whatever can you repeat what they're doing are they teaching in a way to where they're not necessarily revenge trading or buying breakouts or pumping stocks or front running or, or doing anything that is, that is basically, I, I hate to say it, but agenda purposed. Does that make sense? Agenda purpose. They are after their own gain first. They don't care about you. You are a number in their room. You are a sheep. You are someone that they churn and burn. They, they don't know your name. They don't give a flying ass, dude. That's my point. That's the difference of MIC, dude. That is the difference. And Alex is the walking epitome of this and what you can become. So again, if anything, guys, this webinar is almost like, almost like a little bit of a motivation today. And if you guys have questions, I mean, let, ask them away, serious. But this is more of like a, look, I'm telling you, you can do it. But you've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the energy. And you've got to put in all the resources. If you are in our chat and you are not reading this one, like probably valued at $700, which we give away for free every single day. If you are not reading this watch list every single day and reading the commentary, well, guys, you got to watch the video. You got to participate. You got to ask for help. It makes sense. I mean, you got to put in the time. Obviously, you know, we can't trade for you. We can't learn for you. You got to get out there, but, but we have all the appropriate tools. And if you master these three things, man, which basically is process this, I mean, you know, I go, goes without saying number four would just say basically all, D all of the above. Um, yes, that is my final answer. This is what process is having a hard stop, having your certain criteria, not fighting trend, cutting off at a certain time based on time-based intervals for trading. If shorts only have the edge for the first hour and then 2 PM to 3 PM Eastern, you really want to trade low. You want to trade midday unless there are, um, there are exceptions. The way Bao trades is he is able to take full advantage over this process, but guess what? He's so good at channel trading and hitting the resistance lines perfectly that if you have the best patience and discipline and you give yourself tight risk like he does in just channel trade, you can actually see a career in that as well. Bao does that every single day. He will maximize the morning, size the F down and channel trade. But here's what happens is he is cushioned from the morning of using size or and or bigger size that by the time channel trading comes around, if he's up 8,000 in the morning, yeah, risk $400 on a trade. If it lines up, risk 300 bucks to make 600 bucks. And then he just keeps patting the wall. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Um, it's hard to beat Alex. We need to work hard and putting in lots of time. Alex's life motto, dude, is make the most amount of money with the least amount of time. So again, there are guys on Twitter claiming they make 10 million a year. And guess what? Maybe some of them do, but what level of stress are they dealing with? Do they go home and literally hit their girlfriends? Cause they're so stressed from losing $400,000 today. Like who knows, dude? Like, I don't even want to be a part of that level of stress. Go in base hits. So that was another thing. Actually, I think I think it was Austin who, who said this recently and I, it just stuck with me. So, Austin's got really, really good analogies, man, or at least sayings that work for trading. So one of the first that he's known for is guys, front side shorts require front side covers. Just because a stock is pure front side does not mean that there's not a short in it. It's just, if you want to stay safe and maximize your returns and maximize your trades, obviously hitting the side chicks like C tick or C tech in the morning and not ITRM is going to be the way to go. You're going to want to hit things like, like C Tech versus ITR. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, wait, what? What the hell? C Tech. Yeah, C Tech. That's what I was trying to pull up. Um, you're gonna want to hit the side chicks, the simps. Th does that make sense? You're gonna want to hit the simps. This is what Alex did today. Nice. Thank you, Alex, for posting those. Check this out, guys. NNDM side chick right there, popping a VWAP fail. Um, let's go Peck. This was a chat pump. Once it started topping out and stuffing, Alex shorted. Um, and if you guys look at Peck, it was actually a low hanging fruit. So this is where you correlate. And um, this was a, a failed pumper, not MIC. This was a failed competing pumper service that bought the shit, alerted to his room, lined up with previous day resistance. Alex took advantage of that right here, especially when it started stuffing. You saw that and covered runner, dude, nail and bail, sick. Um, and then DM again, 
Once it broke down, once a top was formed, he got his move. Then you size down, hit it, view off again. The first two bounces are the best. The first one's obviously the best. The second one can work. Stay careful on the third. Jfin, boom. I, I forgot this one. Oh, that was the one I forgot. Nice. Thank you, Alex. I totally forgot about this one. Dude, I was even saying it in the open. I was like, dude, uh, I'm saying view up and outer line right there. That See how that core aligned with all this? Check this out. How many points, how many times, and again, I don't need to get it to the scent, just eyeball it, top, 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 consolidation point. It just kept bouncing. This is a form of resistance. So when it's way under and it pops back to that, if you could combine VWAP with this, and it, I mean, if you wanted to get exact, yeah, it's pretty much right there. And look, this isn't rocket science, guys. It's not rocket science. So again, broken stock, side chick, weakest stock of the day. Alex was not trade. I don't even think he did. I don't even think he hit it. ITRM today. Why? Because it was the strongest. Alex has not made a million dollars in the year shorting the strongest stock of the day. I don't know how much more easier it can be. It can be taught. He mentioned it was a side chick. He put in the watch list today, ITRM, potential hot chick of the day. Boom. Let it form a top. Then we will join a pop to short after a death candle at the open, which happened, which happened. But here's the thing. Alex had already made his money, dude. I'm sure he was like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to go on the beach with a pina colada. <laughs> dude, hell yeah. Val, do you want to come on for a sec? Who wants – Val or Alex, you guys want to come on? Alex, let me, let me uh, bring you on, bud. <laughs> He's there now. <laughs> Good point, Val. Oh, shit. Alex, you on the, under Alex Smith? Yeah, there you go. Yo, do you hear me? Take, take the floor if you're there, buddy. Yo, do you hear me? What's up, buddy? Yeah. What's up, dude? What's up? How you doing? Dude, I'm, I'm jealous that you, you fucker, you're in Miami. Like, how much better does I'm it get? I'm in Miami, but I'm not on the beach, bro. I'm in my uh, hotel room right here. And in about 26 minutes, he's going to be on the beach. <laughs> uh, so let me kind of – I'm not going to give too many details of it. I'm just going to give a uh, like a date and a time. So we are planning a Miami meetup on Saturday, October 10th at 1 p.m. The location will be uh, disclosed soon, but we are going to start back up our meetups. And this one is going to be great because both me and Bao are going to be there. Uh, so mark your calendars, Saturday, October 10th at 1 p.m. Miami meetup. Guys, you can screenshot my screen right now just to get the details right here. Uh, Miami meetup, Saturday, October 10th, 1 p.m. Eastern time, not Pacific, PMS. Oh, so, yep, sorry. I just meant to say 1 p.m. <laughs> yep. 1 so that's Eastern. It. Yep. Dude, how, that's going to be so much fun, man. I, I, I'm, I'm in the process of moving, guys, so I won't make this one, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're in good hands. Bow and Alex, dude, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great because, you know, when MIC started, our goal was to kind of throw these meetups and get traders to meet each other. And, you know, because of the pandemic, you know, it was put on hold for the past eight months. So now that Miami is open back up 100 percent and I'm here, it seems like fate that, you know, we should throw our first meetup back from COVID in Miami. So uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone again. And it should be fun. Guys, this is what they look like, man. We get traders together, man. We meet you guys. Seriously, you if you go through the after, look at this, dude. These are our meetups, man. Look at Rock and This is this is a community, man. This is and the Pete. <laughs> this, this is one of Alex's friends that comes to all of our meetups. Dude. He's like one of my dear friends now. But I'm telling you right now, dude, this is a fucking family, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. I wish you were coming too, Tosh, but I know it's kind of a lot right now to kind of get everything settled. It's a little bit short notice because, again, I wasn't really planning on staying in Miami, but I love the vibe and the ambiance here so much. I decided to stay a few more weeks, and uh, that's basically it. so. Bow's gonna come down too. Gonna to see him for the first time in almost a year. Oh my so god! So it's gonna be really fun to year. hang out again. Yeah, man. Yep. Bow just booked his flight today to Miami, um, dude, next weekend. So I I'm telling you, man, it was so short notice. Unfortunately, it just conflicted with my schedule. But guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely make time, man. We, when we created MIC and, you know, Alex basically just corroborated this, is our goal, dude, was to do it different than everybody else. And look, every now and then, you know, s someone will do something where they put in a little, dude, we wanted to meet thousands of traders we wanted to literally yep. like and now that we're gonna start back up again everyone yeah. else is gonna start back up again too bro just you wait and see <laughs> dude like how much fun were our meet alex how many how many in-person meetups do you think we've actually done seriously 
Uh, well, MIC has been around for two years. And for one of those two years, it was COVID. So in that one year span that we one did, year. we threw about six or seven meetups in one year. It was basically every other month. And dude, and like two boot camps. <laughs> oh yeah, and two boot camps, exactly. Shit, man, we did a lot. But it should be oh. fun, man. I'm excited to hang out with everyone. That's awesome, man. Who's, who's going like right off the bat? Anyone here? Does, I know, uh, I know a lot of people are probably going to catch up to this webinar, but is anyone, anyone, ah, oh, dude, that's awesome. David, bring yeah. the Wagyu, dude. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. David definitely bring some Wagyu, bro. <laughs> oh shit. I just screwed David. Now <laughs> Alex is going to order like 10 That's pounds. it, bro. I'm going to clean him out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guys. So it's going to be a casual meetup Saturday, October uh, 10th at 1 p.m. It's going to be at a rooftop. So we're going to be outside. We're going to not be in an enclosed location. Uh, should be really, really fun and exciting. There's going to be drinks there and stuff. So we're going to keep it casual. We're going to keep it good. And, you know, it's going to be great to put a face to all the names that we've been seeing. Because, again, you know, our goal, our mission was to kind of unite trainers and bring them all together because yeah. – you know, training is very lonely. You know, we sit in our desk for eight hours a day and, you know, we're mostly not that social for whatever reason. And, you know, it's really hard to talk to people about training because they don't really understand what it's like. You know, you can't go and tell your friend that you're making or losing a hundred, two hundred dollars a day. They're going to think you're gambling, but you know, we're going to be surrounded by traders. You know, maybe you could find a tab in Florida. Maybe you could find someone that trades a similar style as you. Um, there's a great way to kind of step out of your comfort zone uh, we've been locked up for such a long time and what better way to start getting unlocked than to kind of hang out with me, Bal, and the entire team. Guys, the worst thing you could ever do is not reach out, is not attend these events because you're scared that like maybe someone as good as Alex will judge you or think you'll ask a stupid question. That is not what this is. Man, we were all actually. beginners, bro. I remember when I was yep. trading on my setup in Costco, dude. I went to Costco and I bought the cheapest computer that they had with the cheapest monitors that they had and just with so much lag and so much nonsense. But that's how I started. Alex, I'll, I'll do you one with... better. I'll do you one better. I did, when I first started trading, bro, when I first started trading, um, obviously I was in the most well-known chat room that I mean, we both were that came from, <laughs> that produces a lot of guys getting in the market. And I traded for the first year and a half from TD Ameritrade on, for, I didn't even know what it was at the time, but dude, I did the first bounce setup on my mobile for a year and a half. Oh yeah, dude, definitely. I remember, I remember some of the first stocks I was trading was like plug and all yeah, plug. these crazy things. And, you know, it just goes to show, man, that was where I started, you know, bow started with, you know, these massive screens that he has a very famous story where he had it on a desk and the screens were so heavy that the desk crashed. Like dude, that's the, the best the story. <laughs> freaked out. So, you know, we all start somewhere and, you know, yes, I'm very blessed. I'm very lucky to be Basically, I went to Best Buy the other day. I went and I was like, again, same thing. Like, yo, what's the cheapest setup you got here, bro? So I went, <laughs> I got the cheapest setup they had to set it up and, you know, took it from there. So, I mean, we were all beginners. Yes, I'm in Miami now. Yes, I'm really finding success. But at the same time, you know, I still remember what it was like to be struggling every single day to find consistency. And the thing that really helped me, really, really helped me is just dumbing it down to being so simple. The basics, right? The basics. Short at resistance, cover at support, walk away at zombie times, and ignore the hot chick. And do if I not just keep fight it that yeah. basic. Exactly, bro. If I, and hard stops, hard stops. And if I just kept it that basic, you know what? I went from making uh, five thousand a day, losing ten thousand Tuesday, making thirty thousand Wednesday, losing fifty thousand Thursday, making a hundred thousand Friday. I was starting to like lose my hair, lose my appetite, find so much depression and. You know, ever since I dumbed it down and made it simple, you know, sticking to the side chicks, sticking to the broken stocks, putting hard stops and walking away at zombie times, shit, we're in September, October's about to end. And, you know, I think I'm up even more money now. You know, it's crazy. So well, I know, it's, it's dude, just, I mean, let's, let's be as real as we can, dude. You could probably push a $4 million a year, but dude, why? It's going to stress you. The oh, definitely, bro. Out, I actually dude. underperformed this year. So there's, so I've actually had years where I've made more than a million dollars in the year, but of course. That was trading eight hours a day, trading nine hours a day, you know, sitting in front of the desk at all times. And to me this year, I underperformed in terms of P&L. I didn't make the most money out of anyone, but I could guarantee you that I traded for the least amount of time. Yep. And I don't know about you, bro, but if you tell me that I could trade for an hour a day, make a million dollars and have the next 20 hours to do whatever the hell I want, whether it be working out, going to the beach, drinking, meeting people, 
I would take that over making extra money, working more time, because at the end of the day, uh, there's going to be a certain point where the happiness is more important than the money. Well, and right now, if yeah. I'm able to stay stress-free, it just pours into my trading for the next day as well. Every well, day that guys, I trade stress-free goes to the next day. Dude, and it's like, it's like a lot of new traders really don't understand this concept, but we are trying to like kind of input this in your mind, guys, is like, look, Alice can probably pour, um, you know, pull a three, $4 million a year. But here's the difference between rich and wealthy, man. Rich is having all the money in the world and no fucking time. Dude, if he makes really good money and has 22 hours in the day to do whatever he wants because he traded for two, you know what I mean? It's like not negating sleep. But if he has the rest of the day, dude, because he only traded an hour, that's wealth, dude. You Again, time, my, you goal, money. my goal, my goal, I've met a lot of traders, bro. I've been blessed to meet a lot of traders that make five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars a year, right? It doesn't matter, and, dude. Yeah. And you know what it takes to get there? It takes literally 24 hours of focus. It takes constant studying, constant uh, education, constant improvement, constant everything. And it is possible. Adult and if diapers. I set my mind to it, I can do it. But for me, based on what I'm looking for out of trading, I'm looking for freedom, right? Quality I'm of life. Freedom. And time, right? Because I don't want to sit there. I don't want to sit there for eight hours a day and just trade and trade and trade. And then by the time the market is closed, I'm depressed and my day is already gone. I'm very, very happy and very satisfied doing what I do, sticking to the process and being able to walk away. And, you know, every time that I walk away after a good day, it just makes my day better because I'm already starting on a winning streak, right? I have a great day. I have a stress-free day. It kind of gets these endorphins going in my system that says, all right, you kicked ass trading today. Now time to kick ass everywhere else. If I'm sitting there and draining my time, draining my energy all day, trying to make an extra dollar, I'm not going to have that same high and that same happiness as I'm getting right now. So it's all a matter of perspective. And for sure. me, guys, what I'm looking for is trading for the least amount of time and making the most amount of money. So Dude, I love that. And going back, bro, to this picture, because I literally can't tell you how hard I laughed when Val first told me and Alex, because we're in a group chat together. And he was like, dude, these computers were so big. He goes, it was the middle of the night, dude. It sounded like an earthquake when his desk fell on the open. Yeah, Val thought it was an earthquake. He looks back, he's even more sad because his fucking trading setup. And if you know anything about Val, he loves his trading setup more than anything, especially his mobile and setup. And he's superstitious he about it. Bro, do you know if you guys have ever seen Val on his mobile setup, he travels in a suitcase with his mobile setup. He doesn't even have clothes in a suitcase. It's he just forgets his clothes, setup. dude. <laughs> as long as he brought his computers, he forgets clothes. <laughs> yeah, most of the time he brings the computer, sets it up, and makes enough money to go buy some clothes while he's wherever he is. Dude, I was I was laughing so hard because Val was like, when the pandemic first hit, Alex, do you remember? Val was like, dude. People are quarantined at home. He's like, I've been trading for 20 years. I've been quarantined for 18 yeah, years. Exactly. We've been quarantined our whole life being traders. And that's where the meetups come in, right? He's we like, know what it's shit. like to be quarantined. We know what it's like to be alone. And it's hard to talk to people about trading. And you know what? I'm very, very, very proud of the whole meetup thing that we created. And we started because if people are copying it, it means that there's something really organic and something really good there. So while these people are just doing it to do it, we actually get enjoyment from it. So be prepared to see plenty, plenty more of these uh, happening as the restrictions on COVID end. Oh, 100%, man. And I will definitely be at the next one. Alex, real quick, are there any sectors that you and Bao avoid personally? Sectors? Um, I, I definitely mean, avoid blockchain, man. I'm not a fan of it. Oh, like cryptocurrency, stuff yeah, like, like that? Yeah, like do you avoid any kind of sector? Stuff. I don't really touch that stuff, man, because I don't really understand it. Uh, maybe not in terms of sector, but maybe certain news catalysts that I uh, avoid are phase two, phase three trials. I don't really like those. Huge names really attached. Like, I don't like when companies have Amazon or Walmart in their PR. I'm basically looking for the scammiest of the scam companies. And if they have something like Walmart or Amazon, even if the deal is fake or real, it is still possible to be pumped, you know? Yeah, dude, because if, look, if Warren Buffett's name is in the headline, dude, that's going to, I mean, for the uneducated trader, they're rushing to buy it. Exactly, exactly. So we have a list of rules, and I think you even have your list of rules that's posted at like 6 or 7 a.m. every Bro, single yeah, day. Yeah, it's the somewhere main in room. here. We're, I think it's at like 4 a.m. E, um, every yeah, single somewhere, day it's somewhere in the room, but we have like a set of rules. We have a process. And I'm pretty sure that we have videos in the video library that cover all this stuff too. So God, we just I mean, we just have 
literally every like i'm trying to think like what we don't have for a new we have if everything. you think about the mic video library it's basically a search engine guys so we have so much content and so much videos and so many lessons that if you just go to the video library search bar and type in something you'll be able to get a full database of all of these videos and all of these things that we're talking about and that's kind of how you could refine and improve your process too right found it Here's a whole rule list, guys. Here, I'll show you how to access it. Uh, just download it right here, 4 a.m. Eastern every single day in the main room. It's just, dude, it's gonna, it's just gonna show you how to stay safe. Yep. Oh, shit, again, I just do an offering? And SPI? again, guys, you have to remember that trading is a game of pattern recognition, right? So in trading, your goal is to find patterns that work and wait for them to show up and execute the pattern again, right? So Bao and I have been trading for so long that we've seen the same patterns happen over and over and over again, right? We've seen these same observations like the zombie rule or the first red day or low hanging fruit. So we've basically done all the heavy lifting and all the hard work, finding a strategy that works, right? And that's the reason why we found it is because we lost so much money trying to figure it out on our own, right? Yep. So now you don't even have to figure out the strategy. All you have to do is join and learn the strategy and wait for that pattern to show itself again. And then that's how you capitalize on that setup. So I'm basically waiting every single day for these low hanging fruits, the first red days, the death lines, the VWAP proclaims, all of these setups that are different patterns in my head. And I'm just waiting for the stock to conform to the pattern. And when that pattern presents itself, I put capital at risk and I try to take advantage of that opportunity. You know, nine times out of 10, it's going to work. And that one time out of 10 that it doesn't, my hard stop is going to save me. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. Dude. It, yeah. that, like, It's not a surprise. It's not a coincidence that the same process that I'm using is what James is using, Harry is using, Faye is using, Tom is using, and plenty of all these other members are using to find success. It is not a coincidence that, you know, when, when someone joins MIC that they don't leave or they don't cancel it's because they find so much value in it. At the end of the day, MIC is $6 a day, right? And if you can make more than $6 a day, which is, I paid $55 in commissions today. So if you can make more than uh, $6 a day uh, trading, then this is all worth it. And to me, the way that I see it is that you, with this 200 a month or $6 a day is basically an investment to make five to 10 times that per day. And guys, be, be honest, dude. It's like, be honest with yourself. Seriously, write a spreadsheet, budget yourself if you have to. Dude, I went to Starbucks right before this, and guess what? I need a latte to perk up. Dude, it was six fifty six. man. That's a, that's a day in MIC. Yeah, bro, are man. you crazy, dude? It's like, come on. Like, I know Tosh, Tosh could afford it because he's a great trader and he's making money, but for most people, you shouldn't be spending $6.50 on a goddamn coffee. Guys, that for real, you a man. That gets a full day of yeah. education. And trust me, if you just take 1,000 shares and make a 10-cent scalp, there is half your membership paid off in one day, guys. All you have to do is put in the work. And you know what I've been learning about uh, this whole workout journey and everything else? Because I'm, I'm very new to it, right? I'm very new to this whole working out and exercising world because I really despise it. Uh, but the more that I do it, the more I realize that the only thing stopping me is my, mental, is my brain. My brain is telling me to stop, right? And if I'm just able to kind of trick my brain and convince my brain to keep pushing and keep going, I see the results and it makes it worth it. So point I'm trying to make is guys, take a chance, try, take it seriously, put in the work, watch the videos, and you will see success. It is not a coincidence that I'm the one that is watching all of the videos before they are posted. I put all the moderators send me the videos. I watch them. I approve them or deny them. And then I put it up in the video library for everyone else. So I am the most up to date with the content and I am one of the mentors here. So why shouldn't you be doing something similar, right? If you want to see the same results as me, do the same things I do. And we tell you every day. Dude, we tell you every single day. I mean, it's so funny. Alex is like, dude, literally think about what Val just said. This is like the funniest thing. And it's so true. I'd rather spend $500 on a Supreme t-shirt to look rich than join an MIC to be rich for real. Guys, do you know what lifestyle inflation is? Is buying the Yeezys, is buying the lattes, is buying the, the Patek Philips, is buying all the fucking bullshit that is not going to be an asset and bring you Do you want to hear a funny story? Do you want to hear a yeah, funny story? So I have... So I guess a lot of my friends know me as like the stock market guy now for, I guess, Instagram, whatever. The point is that I have a lot of friends that say, hey, I have a friend that wants to get into trading. 
uh, can you talk to him? Can you do me this favor? And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy. I do favors for a lot of people. So I met with this one kid who was a friend of a friend. And this was maybe like a couple months ago. And he's like, look, man, I'm really excited to get into trading. I saw all your stuff on Instagram and YouTube. I really want to get started. Like, uh, how do I get started? Like, what do I do? What should I do? And I'm like, look, your best bet is to get the annual and to get the accelerator. Because the point is that you're not going to be able to find success in one day or one month if you truly put in two or three months of studying and use the other nine or 10 months to trade, you will find success. And he was like, you know, it's a little bit expensive. You know, I don't really know if I could afford that. And then I was taking him downstairs and he was looking at my shoe collection. And I have a pair of these off-white uh, Nikes that are $2,000, right? Oh, I know which ones dude, you're talking about. Those are like, sick. Dude, I have the same shoes. And I'm like, wait a second. So you <laughs> can't afford to pay $2,000 for a full year, but you have the same $2,000 shoes that I have because I actually like shoes and I can afford it. And I have <laughs> Alex is like, why do you it. have those shoes? And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing having these shoes instead of putting that money towards something else? And that's what's happening, guys. That's exactly what happens. People are buying shoes, Gucci belts, this, that, when they can't afford it. If I made $3,500 today, a $2,000 pair of shoes is not the end of the world for me. But if you're making $500 a week and you're saving up a month to be able to buy these fucking shoes, then that's where the problem is, guys. That is why most people in America are fucking stupid. They're putting their money towards luxury items instead of shit that's going to actually build them a future. Dude, we live in a we live in a world, man, where broke people try to impress other broke people that they, to appear rich, but they're actually broke. It's like, dude, it, it makes no sense, man. Lifestyle inflation is the biggest problem in society today. Is everybody wants to appear what they're not to prove to other idiots that aren't even that. It's like, dude, nobody cares at the end of the day. Just build your own education, man. It's unbelievable, bro. This guy's telling me he doesn't, he can't afford it. He's not, he's interested, but he can't afford it yet. He has a pair of shoes that he literally cannot afford to have. Dude, it, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Alex just said it perfectly. It, uh, dude, I love these. I remember when you showed me these the day you got them. Guys, if you have something in your house like this that you can hawk on eBay and you're not doing that and you're still failing in your trading and you haven't sold these to get an accelerator course, your priorities are out of fucking whack. Yep. Get the accelerator course. Learn how to buy 10 of these. Like, I don't get it, dude. I don't, everybody wants to buy a liability. Nobody wants to like get an asset. And I didn't start buying sneakers and watches and all these toys until I started to have a shitload of money in the bank, right? And I didn't waste my time. I didn't waste my money on this stuff. I want to conserve as much money as I had For to sure. be able to use it in ways that I thought was necessary. And now that I've found a little bit more success and I've kind of gotten a little bit bored with all this shit, I kind of screw around and uh, spoil myself because I feel like I deserve it. <laughs> Whereas a lot of people should really honestly be focusing on building their wealth and building their education. And, you know, when I went to college, college was $20,000 a year. MIC is a tenth of that price to make 10 times that amount, you know? Look, and here's the thing, man. Don't set yourself up to fail. In fact, dude, the only reason why there are hateful people in the world, trolls, somebody, dude, the only, the only reason why there's a troll and a hateful person, whether you see him on Twitter or not, is because it's a motherfucker who gave up on their dreams, guaranteed failure by quitting, and is mad at you for succeeding or at least aspiring to still make your dreams come true. That's yep. what a troll is, dude. Someone who gave and up. Guys, we're, we're here every now. day, every week, man. I was dude, here and now they're blaming the I finger. Was here yesterday, I was here today. I'm here every single day trying to help you guys, being there for you. Bow is here. The moderators are here. So please look at the value that you are getting. Look at the value you are getting. And trust me, it is worth way more than that $6 coffee a day. <laughs> Dude, I remember when Bow saw those with the tag on and he was like, did you steal those from like Foot Locker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Bow cuts off that tag, I lose half the value. Yeah, literally, you lose $1,000 instantly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, guys. That's it. So I'm going to probably wrap up here, Tosh. Uh, the this was awesome, my man. Name. Seriously. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, they could text you 213-458-5997. And that's it.
Yeah, guys, if we didn't get to any questions, uh, I, we really talked about an important topic today on psychology. So seriously, I'll, I'll just answer them in PMs, guys. So if, we, if you missed anything or you want something answered, obviously our PMs are always open. A big thank you for Alex coming on, man. He's in Miami. He should be on a beach right now. But again, man, he's putting in the time to teach you guys. We all are. Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually, for the first time in two years, dude, in two years since inception of MIC, I'm taking the next couple days off, man. I've never taken a weekday off unless it was a, unless it was a holiday. Uh, but because I'm getting in the process of moving and everything, I'm going to take tomorrow and Friday off. So today is your chance to contact yeah, me. Yeah, so if you guys need any help with anything, Tosh is going to be gone tomorrow and Friday. So feel free to DM me, DM uh, the moderators, and we'll all be here to help. So Yeah, guys. Yeah, and, then, and then, dude, we're, we're <laughs> yeah, they forced me to take a day off, man. I'm telling you right now. Now I got to go buy smoothies and skinny jeans, as, as Bal says. That's part of pamper damn process so dude i love you guys man this was a fantastic webinar alex go enjoy miami again guys we have the miami meetup coming up so just keep yeah more in information on monday about locations i will announce the location details and sign up sheet on monday Hell during yeah. the youtube live dude awesome alex go enjoy your day buddy later bro have a good see day you, man. see you guys